A skull can be studied externally and internally in different views. The view from the back, that is the posterior view, is called as norma occipitalis and we will be getting into the details of the same in this video. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we at Dentorize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. The first heading to be considered under Norma Occipitalis is the shape of the skull from this aspect. As we can see from the figure, Norma Occipitalis is convex upwards and then on each side it is flattened below. Please observe the figure very carefully. The second heading under Norma Occipitalis is the bone seen from this aspect. Starting from above, posterior parts of parietal bone can be appreciated. Moving a little downwards, we can see the upper part of the squamous part of occipital bone. On the sides, we can see the mastoid part of temporal bone. If we can recall from our video on regions of the skull, we studied something about the temporal region where the temporal bone is present. It is marked in the figure on the left with the help of white and red circles. Both these circles represent the temporal bone. However, the part of the bone present near the mastoid process marked in the figure with green arrow is called as the mastoid part of temporal bone marked in the figure in red. The third heading would be the sutures. The suture which is present between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone is called as the lambdoid suture. The suture present between the occipital bone and the mastoid part of temporal bone is called as the occipitomastoid suture, very well evident from the name itself. The suture which is present between the two parietal bones and the mastoid part of temporal bone is called as the parietomastoid suture, again very well evident from the name itself. Also, posterior part of sagittal suture can be appreciated from norma occipitalis. This suture is present between the two parietal bones. However, from norma occipitalis, we can just see the posterior part of this suture. Now, let's discuss about certain other features which can be viewed from norma occipitalis. In our video on norma verticalis, we discussed about the parietal foramina, the obelion and the lambda. These features can also be seen in norma occipitalis. If you haven't watched our video on norma verticalis, please do check it out with the link in the description box below. The next feature in norma occipitalis is the presence of external occipital protuberance. From the name itself, we can determine that this feature is present in the occipital bone. To be more specific, it is present in the lower part of the occipital bone or we can say the lower part of norma occipitalis. It marks the junction of the head and the neck. The most prominent point on this protuberance is called as the ineon. Please observe the figure very carefully. Now let's learn about the attachments of external occipital protuberance. If we focus on figure on the right, the lower part of external occipital protuberance gives origin to ligamentum nuchae marked in the figure with green arrow. The upper part of external occipital protuberance gives origin to trapezius muscle marked in the figure with red arrow. It becomes very easy to memorize these things when done with the help of figures and diagrams. Please observe the figure very carefully. The next feature in norma occipitalis is the presence of nuchal lines. Nuchal lines are basically curved bony ridges passing laterally from the external occipital protuberance. There are three pairs of nuchal lines present in a human skull. These are the superior nuchal lines, the inferior nuchal lines and the highest nuchal lines. However, the highest nuchal lines are not always present. The superior nuchal lines are marked in the figure with the help of red arrows. These also mark the junction of the head and the neck. Now let's discuss about the attachments of superior nuchal line. The medial one third of superior nuchal line marked in the figure on left with the help of red gives origin to the trapezius muscle represented in the figure on right. The lateral two-thirds of superior nuchal line gives origin to two muscles. The sternocleidomastoid muscle above marked in the figure with red and the splenius capitis muscle marked in the figure with white. Among the three pairs of nuchal lines that we discussed, highest nuchal lines are not always present. They are called as highest because they are present one centimeter above the superior nuchal lines. They begin from the upper part of external occipital protuberance and are more arched than the superior nuchal lines. They are marked in the figure with the help of red dotted line. Please observe the figure very carefully. 
The next feature in normal occipitalis is the presence of an occipital point. Occipital point is a median point a little above the ineon. To recall, ineon is the most prominent point of external occipital protuberance. The ineon is marked in the figure with white dot and the occipital point is marked in the figure with red dot. One more point to note. Occipital point is a point which is farthest from the glabella. Now what is glabella? Glabella is the centermost point in between the eyebrows. It is marked in the figure on left and right with the help of blue dot. The next feature is the presence of mastoid foramen. Mastoid foramen is located on the mastoid part of the temporal bone at or near the occipital mastoid suture. It is marked in the figure with the help of red arrow. Now let's learn about the structures which pass through the mastoid foramen. These are three in number. Internally, the mastoid foramen opens at the sigmoid sulcus. The meningeal branch of occipital artery and the emissary vein also pass through the mastoid foramen. It can be memorized in the way it is represented on the screen. It becomes very easy to recall these things in this way. The next feature of normal occipitalis is the presence of interparietal bone also called as the inca bone. This inca bone is not present in all the skulls, rather it is very occasionally present. From the name itself we can determine that this interparietal bone is present in between the two parietal bones. It is a large triangular bone which represents the membranous part of the occipital bone that failed to fuse with the rest of the bone. It is marked in the figure with the help of red arrows. Please observe the figure very carefully. So in this video we discussed about the features of the skull which can be observed from normal occipitalis. If you like our content please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned, stay safe. Thank you for watching.